All right, so we're going to look at a couple of basic examples here um, related to this concept of continuity. Um, so here's a, here's a function that we've, we've looked at a few times, right? This sine x over x. Um, and so we can say that the limit, so one of the things we know is that the, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, we know that that limit is 1. Okay? Now, knowing that that limit is 1 is, is not quite enough for me to tell you that the function is continuous because if you were to sketch the function, right, it's undefined at 0. So you'd have a sketch which, which did something like this. Right? There would be a hole in the graph. So the limit exists, but the fact that the limit exists is not enough. This function is not yet continuous. If I wanted this to become a continuous function, well, I have to say what happens at 0. Okay? And it's, you know, and I can't plug in just any old value here. If I decided to make this 0 when x equals 0, well, then f of 0 would be defined but it wouldn't be equal to the limit. If I want f of 0 to be defined, I've got to make sure it's equal to the limit. So I've got to give it a value of 1, right? So giving it that value of 1 essentially plugs the hole, right? Now we don't have a break in the graph anymore. It's one continuous piece, one solid piece, right? Um, this, this sort of situation here where the limit exists, we have a limit exists, it's finite, um, but at that point, the function either is undefined or isn't defined correctly. Uh, these have a name. These are known as, oops, sorry, um, removable discontinuities. And, and I guess the name removable comes from the fact that, you know, by, by simply changing the function at one point, you can get rid of the discontinuity and give yourself a continuous function. Okay? Uh, now, uh, from here we could say, okay, so this is continuous. Now we know that it's continuous at zero. Okay? Um, in fact, this function is going to be continuous now. Now that we've made that correction, this function will be continuous for all real numbers. Uh, the way to establish that is, is using certain properties of continuous functions that we're going to get to um, in a couple of videos from now. Um, so we're going to state some theorems that say that, well, for one thing, we know that the sine function is always continuous. In fact, we, we proved that um, back when we were looking at analytic limits. We used the squeeze theorem um, and some identities to show that sine is always continuous. Um, x is, well, it's a polynomial function. It's a very simple polynomial function, I suppose. Uh, but uh, all polynomial functions are continuous. That's also been established. And then essentially the, the quotient rule for limits tells us that as long as the denominator is not zero, limit of a quotient is quotient of the limits, and that tells us that the quotient of two continuous functions should be continuous wherever the denominator is non-zero. And, and now we know that, in fact, this function is continuous everywhere. Right? So if we were asked for the interval of continuity, well, we could say that it's from minus infinity to infinity. Now, this, uh, this example here, this, is kind of, this has a number of names. It's sometimes called a floor function, or a greatest integer function, or step function. This is the function that takes a real number as an input, returns an integer as, as an output, and the integer that it gives you is basically the biggest integer that's less than or equal to whatever number you put in, right? So for numbers between 0 and 1, it's going to give you 0. For numbers between 1 and 2, it gives you 1. For numbers between 2 and 3, it gives you 2, and so on, okay? Now, um, clearly, looking at the graph, this is not a continuous function. Um, right? We see these breaks, right? Uh, and these also have names. These are known as, as jump discontinuities. Right? Um, 
that's the second of three common types of discontinuity that you see. The, the remaining type is, is sometimes called an infinite discontinuity. Um, these are the discontinuities corresponding to vertical asymptotes. Um, so the way you know you have a jump discontinuity is you look at the left and the right hand limits and they don't agree, right? So here we have a situation where the limit doesn't exist because the left hand limit doesn't equal the right hand limit at various points, right? So at each of these places where the left and right hand limits don't agree, you have a jump discontinuity. Uh, nonetheless, we could say that this function is continuous on, well, it's continuous from 0 to 1. And in fact, we can include, we can include 0 because at an endpoint, for continuity at an endpoint, it's enough to say that the limit as x approaches 0 from the right is equal to f of 0, which is the case, right? Um, so it's continuous on 0, 1. It's continuous from 1 to 2. It's continuous um, from 2 to 3, and so on, right? And, uh, and also um, from minus 1 to 0, and so on. So all these half, it's continuous on all these half open intervals. Um, one word of warning. If you're used to dealing with domains of functions, you might be tempted to take the union of all these things, right? Um, you've got a bunch of intervals where, where the function is continuous. You want to say that it's continuous on all of them, and so you're tempted to take the union. The trouble is, if you take the union of these intervals, well, then you're going to miss the discontinuities, right? Because the union of, of the interval from 0 to 1 and the interval from 1 to 2 is the interval from 0 to 2. 1 gets included because it's included here. Right? But it would be false to say that this function is continuous from 0 to 2 because clearly there's a discontinuity at 1. Um, so one of the things that you'll find in the Apex textbook is that when we're talking about intervals of, of continuity, we, we never use union notation to talk about um, intervals of continuity. Right? We, we just list the intervals without taking the union. Uh, Something to be, this is something to be aware of because in other textbooks you will often find the answer given using unions. And if you're using on, online homework systems like WebWork, you might occasionally be asked to input your answer using unions. In some contexts this is correct, uh, but in certain cases like this, using a union would certainly give you the wrong answer.